It was a little nerve-wracking to become a paramedic. Um, you kind of uh, have a lot of things to think about and uh, a lot of things can go right and sometimes it can go wrong. But uh, I, um, it's a nerve-wracking job. It still is after 23 years. I get a little worrisome and a little hair on my neck stands out a little bit when I recall. My name is John Riedemann. I'm an EMT with the Norfolk Lions Club Volunteer Ambulance. My name is Tom Vornberg, and right now I am a long-term substitute teaching science at a school in the North Shore of Boston. So my name is Johan Hedlund, and I am a retired engineer, but currently I still, I still working as a paramedic. We're seeing a marked decline in the number of people that are stepping up to volunteer. Without quoting specific numbers, I know from when I started 20 years ago, the situation has changed dramatically. Um, we used to have really all the volunteers we needed to cover all the ships. Now it's a lot different and uh, the, the burden falls on just a small handful of us. One of the things I think is that it's a, um, it's a hard job. The environment, the work environment is difficult. And not difficult, but it's, it's kind of you spend a lot of time in an ambulance and especially rural areas. You have to drive around a lot and you go into places where you're not comfortable sometimes and you don't know what you're going to get. Um, there's times where it just we don't have enough people to cover and we have to call in another town to help us. I mean, if you talk to my wife, she doesn't want to do it because she She's afraid of seeing something icky, you know, so she does, she's a little nervous about that. And that, and she may be speaking for a whole part, part of the population that they, you know, they're not, they don't think they're cut out for emergency medical stuff because they think that's, you know, it's going to be, you know, a lot of blood and gore when, it, when in turn it really isn't. Sometimes you do say, well, why am I doing this? Oh, at three in the morning when you don't feel like getting out of bed when it's five below zero. And also, we have a, a problem with people are using uh, like emergency departments as their main first line of medical care. And then, of course, we become the transporting agent for those people. So we sometimes, maybe as a taxi driver to the, to the emergency department. The shortage of volunteers, uh, the consequences are seen more than anything by the, the difficulty uh, that it places, the burden that it places on the volunteers themselves. I can't think of a time where we've ever just not been able to help someone that needed help. You know, it's sometimes the time is delayed, but we, we're always able to, to get there for the person. So the effect of the uh, of shortage is obviously respond time. People might have to wait um, and therefore the, the, the service, the medical service, is going to be um, hindered by the whole, the, that we don't have enough people. Favorite thing about the job is being able to help people that appreciate having a caring, often friend or sometimes it's family member um, that, that really needs help. It really makes a difference having someone, you know, come and help you out when you're having a terrible day and you're having maybe the worst day of your life. The difference of having a stranger come in versus having someone that knows you, cares about you, loves you is huge and that's really rewarding when you can be there for someone like that. If you could talk to your younger self about the job and the current shortage, what would you say? <laughs> I would have continued doing the work back when I was in my teens, in my 20s, when I was a, a water safety instructor and had advanced life-saving. I would have stuck with that. If I could talk to my younger self, uh, instead of engineering, I would probably go into medical. I would say I wouldn't really do anything different. I love doing this and I'm, I'm really glad to be a part of this. All the struggles uh, notwithstanding. The only thing I would maybe change if I had this to do over again and thinking about the problems that we have today would be I would convince more of my friends and people I know to volunteer too. Yeah, I think people have to explore what it, what, how much of a sacrifice really is it 
to volunteer. I think finding ways to help the people that you live with is a, is a good idea, you know, and, I, and that uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be something spectacular.